we put big blue boxes around these because these are the results we're going to use, we're going to take advantage of, to have a look at these. Okay? Now, you don't need to write this bit down, but can you see that here, the idea is that these two angles are the same. You can supply any angle you like in there, right? Any angle you like. For instance, if I double the size of the angle here, then in order to keep the angle the same size, I would have to double the angle on the top. That makes sense, doesn't it? Right? They're going to behave in the same way. So when I take the limit, it's still going to approach one. Okay? Now you look at this guy, right? And you're like, hmm, but they're not the same. They're not, they're not 5x and 5x or 3x and 3x. Okay? But that's okay. Just like we've been doing with integration. And you're like, I want a certain number at the front, because I'm supposed to have that number there from differentiating. I want one of these numbers to change. Now you tell me, which do you think is easier to muck around with? This number or this number? And I'm gonna say the denominator, right? Like gross, we're gonna to have to deal with identities if we want to change that number. So I don't wanna do that. So I'll change this guy. I want him to be a 5x, right? So I'm gonna say, well, do you agree that 3x is 3 fifths of 5x? You read that? Like it's smaller, right? It's three fifths. Okay. So now this three fifths, it's just a constant coefficient. Um, it is on the denominator. So when I pull it out, it's going to turn upside down, right? So it's a constant. So I'm just going to pull it out the front. Like so it's five thirds of that limit. And now, hey presto, our angles they match. Okay. So I've got my sine theta on theta now. Right? It just happens that my theta is five x. Now, I have foolishly not left myself enough space. So, what will my next line be? Well, it's 5 thirds times, now please, like I mentioned it before, like I mentioned it here, right? It's not 5 thirds and then I ignore this thing. It's 5 thirds times something, namely 5 thirds times 1. So, I'm going to write that down, and there is my answer. Anything you do will have to account for this number changing in some way. And if you feel it makes more sense to you to put this number at the front and then adjust that one, then you go for it. Just like with integration, what's important is you get the right number there and you haven't actually changed the thing. All right, have a look at this one. Again, same kind of thing. These numbers, these angles, they don't match. So which do you think will be easier to muck around with? The numerator, clearly, right? So I want that to be a half H on the top. Do you agree that 2h is how many lots of half h? It's four of them, right? Four lots of half h, right? Now it's an important step that you pull that out so you can demonstrate, ah, now I will have theta on tan theta. It's just that my theta happens to be half h. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Did you have a question, Music? Um, for example one, you can take out five Hold on, sorry, you're talking about. Can you just pull it off out? Like pull what out? Five and oh, gosh. You mean, right, wait, isn't that what I did? What do you think? Sine x and sine x and sine x. Hold on, you lost me. I am confused just, by your question. You just pulled out the coefficients. Oh, the coefficients. Wait, what? <laughs> 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 Here? Here? Yeah. Come on. Here? From the this one here, it doesn't work. The second one is the same. Can you do it? Um, I'll let you experiment with some numbers to show how problematic that approach is. Do you make Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Just quickly, like we said, let's finish this off. Me too. What if we get a fraction like a denominator? That's four times one. Again, don't skip that step. You're evaluating the limit. That's four. Okay, now, I should clarify my five here. So I've deliberately left this one to last because I kept saying to you, like, oh, which one is easiest to muck around with? And clearly when it's just, you know, a term by itself without any trig in it, that's the easy target. But here you have no easy targets. So well, that's not too bad. You can separate it. So I'm going to need to separate these things out. You will notice, have a look at my limits, right? The missing piece is that I have no theta by itself. I have sine of something. There's a sign, I've got tan or something, but there's no theta in the numerator or the denominator. Oh. So that's okay. I'll just introduce one. 
Okay. Now I want, I've got the same three theta on the top, so I'll leave him on the top, but he needs to be paired with an angle of some kind. Do you agree with that? Oh, I'm going to make it the right angle in a second. Oh. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Since I've divided by theta, I'd better multiply through by theta as well, so that there's no net change. Does that make sense? So now, my sine is paired with a the theta, and my tan is paired with a the theta. Ta-da! There's the limits I was after. And I only really need to do some numerical shuffling in order to get it to be what I want. Right? For example, if I put a 3 here, then I'm going to need to put a 3 out here. Does that make sense? Because this is dividing by 3, so that's multiplying by 3 to balance out. And then if I put a 5 here, I had better divide by 5 so that these balance. You see, it's all about just making sure you, it's just like integration. You're balancing back and forth to make sure you have no net change. So this is 3 fifths times 1 times 1. There are two limits there in operation. Okay? And they both evaluate out to 1, which gives me an answer. Okay.